Metzger from the MIT Music Department and Theater Arts Section's Concerts and Events Office, who really put together a lot, very, very much, and Alina Hamilton from the Berkeley uh, College of Music, who, uh, who has really helped us so much with all the uh, with all the logistics and the catering and many other things today. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, thank you all so much for being a part of this hackathon with us. Um, our team, for one, had a fantastic time. And particular thank you, again, I know we just did thank yous, but we had a great time, so we just want to make sure that we thank Matthias and Mike for just getting this whole thing together. What an incredible experience. So thank you for that. <laughs> our team... We all came from very diverse backgrounds, but we were all united by one idea, which is that we wanted to make a way to increase the audiences for classical music. We all love classical music. It's extremely important to us. But in our everyday lives, and as we are experiencing classical music, it's obvious that there's a lack of branching out to new people who are engaging with classical music, and there are a lot of obstacles to experiencing why that is the case. We have determined that one way that we can tackle this is to take a lot of the choice and intellectualizing of classical music out of the equation for users. So we've created a streaming platform that's essentially taking classical music back to the core of the emotions that you experience and the activities that might be accompanied in everyday life with classical music. So we will do a demonstration and speak a little bit more about what our process was as we were going forward in creating this application, uh, but it's called Soundtrack. It's creating a personalized soundtrack to your life which uses classical music, uh, more instrumental music. We're not calling it classical music because we gotta fool them and bring them into the fold of classical music. And uh, we're actually going to talk next about, um, we've sorted the ideas in playlists that are categorized by activity rather than composer or genre. Uh, but before we go into the logistics of that, we also identified that there were some serious issues with how classical music streaming is implemented today, and so that's what uh, Sharon will be talking about next. Thanks, Tracy. So um, I guess as everybody um, sitting in this hall right now, at some point in your life, you've went online, different apps or YouTube, different video streaming um, channels to figure out how can I get the best the classical music playlist out there. We had the same experience, and we figured across all kinds of platforms, we identify six major pain points right now across different um, classical music streaming playlists. The first one being most of the playlists, um, they don't differentiate among live and studio recorded um, um, videos or audios. So, you know, from piece one to piece B, it could be from very um, ex um, exciting live um, audio to a very controlled environment to being recorded in the studio. And that is not a very comforting experience for the listeners tr to transition. The second one being that, um, you know, the curators, whether it's a machine curated or human uh, handpicked, they ignore the asymmetry between beat, meter and temples among different pieces. So that make a very um, uncomfortable transition as well a lot of times. Um, moreover, um, you know, from piece one to piece B, there could be a huge volume change from very silent, um, mellow melodies all the way to a full orchestra, um, Beethoven number seven. So um, that's also a very uh, big issue right now with different platforms. Um, also, you know, the playlist, th a jump between key signatures from minor to major. Um, uh, also, a link vastly different instrumentations between different pieces from a solo piano performance uh, suddenly to a full orchestra. Um, and lastly, um, it doesn't consider the user's available time when they want to listen to the music. For example, they're in a commute, only have five to 10 minutes but uh, the playlist instead show them a 50 minutes long movement that the, the, the listener cannot finish in that particular commute and just to leave a bitter taste in their mouth. Um, so we create a soundtrack to technically solve and address the challenges 
but also this app is not only a technical one, it's also a humane one. Um, as Tracy mentioned, we want to um, identify and match the right classical music or what we call instrumental music when we do the marketing um, to enrich the daily activities of the user. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Megan. He, uh, she will demo us how we solve one particular technical challenge uh, shown in this slide. So one of the things that we wanted to solve was the issue of going from a track that has a very large uh, or loud volume or soft to the next track, which might be the opposite. Um, so what we're seeing in this plot here is um, the beginning of the track, the volume is on the y-axis, um, and the end of the track, the volume is on the x-axis here. Um, and it doesn't look like there's a large correlation, so that indicates that there is actually some variability in the volumes, um, and they, they aren't necessarily tracked over the entire piece. Um, so this was definitely a problem we wanted to solve. Also, um, these um, activities are in the different colors here. Um, we're hand curated in this small data set. Um, and some of them actually do seem to be clustering a little bit, which is kind of a nice add-on. Um, so that's a nice, a nice feature. Um, so what we ended up doing was taking every pairwise um, point between the end of one song and the beginning of another song um, and minimizing the difference between those volumes. Um, so that's, that's how we generated these playlists, and the playlists that we have are actually that optimization. So you might want to get to experience a little taste of what this optimization sounds like. Uh, so we're just going to run you through a very short demonstration of our website. Um, this is, of course, just a mock-up. It's not a full version and doesn't have all of the features that we would eventually like to include. Um, but we will walk you through, and actually at the end of the presentation, uh, there actually is a mobile link that uh, you'll be able to use, so you can check it out. The tracks will not stay up for long, uh, so you'll have to do it quickly, but uh, there will be an opportunity for you to play around as well with the site, and we're, of course, very interested in feedback for what you think of this service. Uh, so here you see, um, this is our, our homepage. Uh, we're, we're trying to create a very simple interface that's going to be inviting and easy and not require any sort of intellectual decision. So we have uh, five categories. Um, we have um, the morning, your wake up presumably, uh, working, dinner, and bedtime. Very simple things that we'll say 90% of adults probably share at some point during their day. And so if we select one of these categories, morning perhaps, uh, we have a simple prompt, how long would you like to listen for? At this point, this doesn't do anything, but eventually it will. Um, so when you click five to 20 minutes, you then are prompted for if your morning will be a slow one, if you would like to be more relaxed, or if you would like to really get up and get going quickly. So we'll pick, take it slow. And once you are on Take It Slow, then automatically a soundtrack will begin to play. Yeah, that's about as loud as we're gonna go. You might be able to hear, if it is loud enough, that this is Dvorak's New World Symphony second movement. All right, so let's skip ahead to the transition. You all know how it goes in the middle. So as you can hear, the algorithm that we created made a very magical moment in that transition. And though switching from the second movement of Dvorak's Ninth Symphony into a Bruckner Symphony might seem strange um, from a programmatic perspective and maybe would be jarring to the listener, uh, it actually eliminates all of the um, 
discomfort and, and pain points that you hear when just in this simple algorithm, which obviously eventually we might even want to create a more robust one, um, when we're just adjusting for what is the energy at the end of the preceding track and then into the next track matching that same energy level. Um, so we're pretty excited about what this did and it actually um, is relatively simple. And maybe if there's time we can do one more transition. Um, wake up music might all sound the same, but let's try something that's a little bit more upbeat. So we'll go back to the home page. And let's start again. Does anyone have a, an idea for what we should pick next? Commuting. commuting. All right. We all commute. So let's see what is recommended for our commute. In a rush? Should we try it? This one's untested. So let's, this is really hacking at its, at its best. All right, let's skip to the end. This is the moment of truth here. That was pretty good. <laughs> We actually didn't test that, just so you know. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that's just a little sample of, of how our website works. And um, obviously, for um, getting this out there in the public, the mobile app would be a huge component, because all of these things are um, things activities that you experience in your everyday life. You may not be home. You may not be at your computer or your speakers. And it's important that you're able to experience classical music and have classical music really write the soundtrack and, and enhance the experiences in your everyday life. Um, so thank you all so much for listening to our presentation. And all of you have incredible skills. And there, we only tackled one of the pain points of, of how to make classical music streaming better. But if anyone has other ideas to how to tackle some of these other pain points, we would be very interested in your ideas and integrating